Let's begin constructing the definition of matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is a very general operation. So we'll start building up our definition from a very specific example. Namely, we'll multiply this 3 by 3 matrix by this 3 by 1 matrix. And as is always the case with matrix multiplication, the dimensions need to be compatible. There need to be as many elements in this single column as there are columns in this matrix. And what this matrix product invites you to do is to calculate the linear combination of the columns of the matrix on the left, where the coefficients come from the matrix on the right. And as we talk about matrix multiplication and larger matrices, that will remain true. The result will always have to do with linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left, where their coefficients come from the columns, in this case a single column, from the matrix on the right. Now, when you're looking at a 3 by 1 matrix, you may be tempted to call it a vector, because it is indeed a vector in R3. But in the context of matrix multiplication, I think it's better to call it a matrix, just to keep the parity between the two elements in this product. But occasionally the word vector might slip in, because when I look at a 3 by 1 matrix, I immediately think a vector in R3. So I may say vector, but I really mean matrix. So the answer to this matrix product will be another 3 by 1 matrix. Why? Because we're finding a single linear combination of the columns of the matrix on the left, where the coefficients come from this matrix. So the answer will be a single column or a 3 by 1 matrix. So let me draw its shape. It'll look like this. We just have to fill in the numbers. And once again, this matrix product is the linear combination of the columns of this matrix, where the coefficients come from this matrix are 1, 2, and 3. So if I were to write it in an expanded way, it would be 1 times 1, 4, 7, plus 2 times the second column, 2, 5, 8, plus 3 times the last column, which is 3, 6, 9. 3, 6, 9. All right, so this is the fully expanded matrix product of this matrix and this matrix. So let's evaluate this linear combination. We have 1, 5, 14. Again, I'm doing the running sum. In the second entry, we have 4, 14, 32, 14 plus 18, 32. And in the last entry, we have 7 plus 16, 23, plus 27, 50, 50. And we're done with our first matrix multiplication example. So there's something to be pointed out. In fact, we're not doing anything new. We're once again talking about linear combinations, as we've done all along in this entire course. All of this continues to be about linear combinations. So we're not learning a new fundamental operation, still linear combinations. But now we're organizing these linear combinations into much larger and more powerful structures. We're organizing the information that we already possess. That's one of the great advantages of matrix multiplication, the associated matrix algebra, and the language that it introduces. What it helps us do is unite many different, more primary operations into a single larger operation and give, it, and give all of these matrices single letters and make the resulting expressions all very nice and compact. So even though those expressions are very nice and compact, what's happening underneath in the background is not necessarily complex or maybe not necessarily complicated, but very complex and very involved. And a lot is going on. There are a lot of calculations which are now captured by a single operation. That's one of its uh, many advantages. That's what we're seeing here. And like I said before, as these matrices get larger, all of this will continue to be about linear combinations of the matrix on the left, of the columns of the matrix on the left, where the coefficients come from the matrix on the right. 
And just to reinforce that point one more time, let's, let me say a word or two about this resulting vector matrix, this resulting three by one matrix. But in this case, let me call it a vector. So this vector is necessarily in the column space of this matrix. Why? By the very construction. The column space is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of this matrix. And that's one of them. It's the linear combination with coefficients 1, 2, 3. One of many in the set of all possible linear combinations. So this vector, in this case, is in the column space of this matrix. So let's make sure of that. We've encountered this matrix several times before. We're very familiar with its column space. We know that it's characterized by middle entry being the average of first and third. That's true for each one. So that's the characterization of the column space of this matrix. Let's make sure that this vector is indeed in the column space of this matrix. And indeed it is, because 32 is the average of 14 and 50, 64, that's correct. So the resulting columns, in this case, a single column, is always in the column space of the matrix on the left. All right, so this completes our first example. Before this video is done, let's do another two by two example, two by two by a two by one example, just so that we have a little bit more practice. All right, here's our two by two example. I think the first step in any matrix multiplication problem would be to make sure that the dimensions are compatible. Namely, that there are as many numbers in this column as there are columns in the matrix on the left. And in this case, in both cases, the number is two. So these matrices are indeed compatible. So what will be the dimension of the answer? Well, this matrix product is inviting us to find linear combinations, a single linear combination of the columns of this matrix where the coefficients come from this matrix. So the result will be a single two by one column. So the dimension of the answer is two by one. So the only part that's remaining is filling in the numbers. So once again, this matrix product is inviting us to evaluate the following linear combination. Minus one of the first column of the matrix on the left, plus one times this second column of the matrix on the left. And the answer is, of course, 11 and 11. 11 and 11. And we're now done with our second matrix multiplication example. So before we move on to matrices with multiple columns, and I'm now talking about the matrix on the right, let's practice the case where we have a full matrix on the left and just a single column as the matrix on the right, because there's still quite a few things to say about that.